let's dig deep into the annals of time to unveil the complexity that have shaped our nation's destiny. Before we dive into the acts of the matter, let's address the elephants in the room. The worsened state of order development and growth plaguing our nation, from corruption to religious crises and to tribalism and nepotism. It is clear that we face formidable challenges on our path to greatness. Could it be that the nation's failure is traced back to its independence gained from its colonial masters on a platter of good or were we simply not right for our self-governance? Again, could it be probably Nigeria was not even meant to be in the first place? Join the conversation as we explore these questions and more. America was once a slave colony under the then great British Empire, but today they are the world power and train their enslavers, now setting the path for which both their masters and the rest of the world to follow. It never came on the platform of gold. It never came without struggle for independence and sacrifice paid by patriotic citizens who lost their lives, their family members, and properties for the freedom America now enjoy today. India and China too emerge from the shadow of colonialism to claim their rightful place on the global stage. But it never comes without sacrifice. This nation made and paid lifelong sacrifice to buy their cherished freedom. Probably that was the reason why this nation are progressive. The saying is right, whatever you don't pay duly for, you don't value it much. Should this now be the case of Nigeria? The Nigeria flies in without blood because of its peaceful transition of government from its colonial master. The green in the flower signifies the country prosperity, the fertile soil of the country, the diverse of mineral resources. The white signifies peace, harmony, unity the countries enjoy. Pause for a moment. As this peace and prosperity translate in the country's reality, I guess not really much. You see, Nigeria soil is blessed with diverse and abundance of mineral resources such as crude oil, gold, uranium, iron, oil, bitumen, glass, and a lot more of these mineral resources. Nigeria are homogeneous people with diverse cultural heritage and unique and distinct political structure or system even before the arrival of their colonial master. In the north, the people pay their allegiance to the Emir, in the west to the Obas and its leaders, in the east to the Igwe and the council leaders. And this system still operated this very day. In 1800, the British came into the region now known as Nigeria as trading partners, trading in palm oil and slavery. After the abortion of slavery business came the industrial boom in Europe. These European nations need cheaper material in order to power their industry. So the business of colonies blossomed and Europeans explored Africa and some other parts of the world. You see, under the Berlin Conference, Nigeria was apportioned to Great Britain because of its already established presence through the Royal Niger Company. And in 1914, Lord Lugard Amagamit bought the Southern and Northern Protectorate to become the present day Nigeria. In 1953, Nigeria joined the rest of the world to proclaim its call for self governance. This struggle was fronted by men and women from all parts of the country. Azukiwe was the man from the east, Tapa Balewa as a frontman from the north, Awulowa as a frontman from the west, Hotrebo as a frontman from the south, and some other prominent women, which include the mother of Fena, the Afrobeat legend. Then in 1960 came the country's independence and in 1963 it obtained its full control as a sovereign state, stress free. But this wasn't without negotiation which no one knows to this very day. This also replayed itself before the death of Queen Elizabeth. All major presidential aspirants visited England which no one even dared to ask what is the reason for the visit. But Let's continue with our conversation. On the eve of independence, something happened that nobody often talked about that has reshaped the destiny of the nation and has prompted virtually most of the coup that happened, especially the January 1966 coup that overthrew the civilian government and also led to the death of its, some of its founding fathers. The likes of Tapa Balewa, Ahmed Bello, Akintola and the rest of them. Some saw this event as a region trying to outsmart the other and some saw it as a win-win for all regions but what happened unless we went back to history. To 
provide the solution first, it is to identify the root cause of the problem. No professional doctor will administer to a patient without diagnosing the source of the symptoms. Trust me, this is the genesis of Nigeria's problem face today. In 1959, elections were held to appoint members that would constitute the country's governing body after independence. They not won the majority seat, but its vote alone could not get it the country's highest seat of governance. How would the puzzle be solved? A coalition will be needed, and this could either be the probability of a merger with the Eastern Party controlled by Zeke or the Western Party controlled by Ao. But someone took a move which the other party never saw it coming, which was Ao. He proposed a merger with Inamdi Azukiwe, of which Zeke will become the Prime Minister, Tepabalewa should become the President, and he himself should become the Minister of Finance. That sounds like a win-win for all region. But the turnout of events, it happens to be the reverse case. Zeke formed a merger with the Northern Party and he became the President. Tafabalewa became the Prime Minister and Awu was left out of the government completely. A few years later, Awu was jailed on the allegation of planning to overthrow the government. If the allegation were true, why the attempt to overthrow the government? Maybe. Probably his action was led by the pain of being left out of the government they had fought for. But what if the allegation were not true? Could it be probably I was jailed because he was becoming a thorn on the flesh of the government because of its criticism and they need to do away with him? Prison was the only alternative. Some believe there was no concrete evidence to his jail, except from Mulberry Underground in Nevada. Does this answer the question that probably we were not ready for our self-governance or we were not there to be as a nation? If you ask me, the turnout of events in Nigeria does not justify the fact that a nation should govern itself. Every nationality ought to govern itself and our coming together wasn't a mistake. Our founding father had the option of dividing the nation apart and remain a sovereign state, but they choose to keep us together. Our togetherness makes us stronger and provides us the opportunity to be a greater nation and a more respectful state among religions of nations. The fact is, the amalgamation of Nigeria was a business motive, but we should have come together to discuss how we should govern ourselves, which we never did. The summary of our problem today is greed. Our greed gives back to the range of problems we face today, be it corruption, bribery, tribalism, nepotism, or whatever, name them. We have been through pain and fire together because of military coup, electoral violence, corruption, terrorism, economic hardship. The solution to our problem are not in a mystery box that needs to be unlocked. This is the time for us to come together and discuss our unity and way forward. It is time for us to discuss how we're going to live in peace, in harmony and find a way to forget our difference and the pain we've caused each other in the past. Only through our unity can we chance progress and overcome all our challenges and some other external force following our problems. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and comment.